This is Pepsi Zero Sugar. Zero sugar, zero calories, but max Pepsi taste. It's okay to get emotional. We know just how you feel. We're here in Richmond at Liberty Place Recovery Center for Women, one of 16 Recovery Kentucky programs across the state that have recently been announced by the Kentucky Housing Corporation as being extremely successful, according to a study they did. We talked to Director of Liberty Place, Gwen Holder, about what this means for the area and what their success rates actually are. We also talked to her about the syringe exchange program, of which she's on the advisory committee for. With the recent advancement of a possible new treatment center in Madison County, we also spoke to Gwen about physical court and how successful these recovery centers actually are. Liberty Place Recovery Center for Women is one of 17 recovery centers here in Kentucky. It was one of the original 10 that were built and we opened in 2008. And we are a program for women. We have 108 beds here in Madison County and we serve the 6th Congressional District. Primarily we work with women who are homeless or marginally housed who have a substance abuse problem. And we get referrals from the Department of Corrections or we can also take referrals uh, from women who are self-referred, women who have a problem with drugs or alcohol and they need help. The UK Center on Drug and Alcohol Research does follow-up data for all of the recovery centers and it showed that um, what we're doing here is effective. A lot of people talk a lot about medically assisted treatment and that that's the only way that we're gonna you know, deal with heroin use, you know, the heroin problem has just exploded all over Kentucky, Ohio, and West Virginia in particular. But we do know that abstinence-based programming is effective and it's effective here at Liberty Place on a daily basis. In the four years that I've been here, it's dramatically changed. Our population has gotten much younger and as a result of that, um, it's changed the dynamic of our population in the program. I've been doing this, this work for a long time, and when a client used to say, I'm not ready yet, we would say, come back when you are. I can't say that to somebody now, because one more use could be their last with heroin like it is, because the number of people who are dying from just one more use is just incredible. The numbers have ranged in around the 60%, um, 60% of the people who go through programs like this, 60 to 65% stay sober a year out. In other words, a year after uh, completing a program like this, they say they are still sober, still going to meetings, and not incarcerated. And that's a big deal because most of the people that come into programs like this, not all but most, have got some kind of legal involvement and um, have been obviously using drugs or alcohol when they get here. And we know that um, addiction is chronically relapsing. So the longer that someone stays sober, the longer they're going to be able to stay sober, if that makes sense. I think that we do need something new. I um, was on the jail task force that studied the issue and um, I think that we definitely need something. Uh, because the jail is so chronically overcrowded, they're not able to offer programming here in Madison County. And I do know I have a background in corrections. I used to work for the Department of Corrections. And I know that programming makes a difference for inmates who are incarcerated. If they're going to be locked up, um, programming is going to help them to learn how to do something differently. I think that, um, you know, it's offering something for the men in this area would be huge. You know, it would be a, a, a bonus for, the, for this area and I think for the recidivism rates. I think the syringe exchange program is a really good thing for Madison County because we do have an incredibly bad problem um, with heroin here in the area. We've had citizens talk about the fact that there are needles everywhere. They've talked about the fact that their children have found needles all over the place. We know that um, addicts who inject um, have very high rates of hepatitis C and are at high risk of contracting HIV. And in order to get dirty needles off the street, a syringe exchange program is something that can really, really be effective in doing that. Initially, there was a lot of people who were really against a program like this because they felt like it would bring a lot more addicts into town and that it would be um, something that would be a, a real problem.
problem for the community. And you know, there there's still a lot of stigmatism when you talk about addicts. There's a lot of moral judgments about it. I know it's a disease. I think that once you put a name and a face to someone who struggles with addiction, I think it's a lot harder to make those moral judgments about it. For WBON-TV here in Richmond, I'm Marissa Hempel.